Morning, church. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Well, the traditional Easter greeting is Christ is risen, and then you say Christ is risen indeed. So let's try that out. Christ is risen. I can't hear you. Christ is risen indeed. Well, Yes, we are here in the living room of the parsonage, and you might even hear my little dog's nails clicking through the hallway as he goes uh, searching for his doggy things. But we are we are at the parsonage because we're in the midst of a blizzard this morning. Um, I'm glad you're with me today. We are Spirit Lake United Methodist Church. Even though we are not in a building, we are still the church. We are still about making disciples and making a difference. Um, in the comments today, when the live stream is done, I'd invite you to talk about one of your favorite Easter traditions or give us a picture of how you're celebrating Easter today or who you're celebrating it with. Maybe it's just a beloved pet. Maybe it's with a favorite potted plant. But I'm, I'm glad you're here with us today. If you have a candle handy, I would invite you to light a candle as we um, begin worship knowing the light of Christ is with us no matter where we are. God, for your church throughout the world, we thank you for the light that shines in us. We give thanks for the light of Christ that is shining in many homes. And we pray, God, that by the power of Easter resurrection, we too might sense that Christ is living in us. Amen. Well, for our drive through service this morning, we have recorded um, some words from Tava as far as a, uh, some opening words to, for worship and a prayer. So I'm going to play those for you right now. And in the trial run, this worked pretty cool. So hopefully it will work for us now. This is Tava offering us some opening words celebrating Easter. Hi, this is Tava. Hear these words as we begin our Easter celebration. Rejoice, the stone is rolled away, grave clothes neatly folded, no more the smell of death. Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah, he is risen. Rejoice, scripture has been fulfilled, the sting of death is gone, the victory has been won. Behold the risen Christ. Hallelujah, he is risen. Rejoice, the curtains torn in two, our God invites us in. Christ sacrificed enough to wash away our sins. Hallelujah, he is risen. Christ is risen. Let us pray. Lord of life, you defeated death to demonstrate a love that is beyond our understanding, that reaches out even today. You offer saving grace to all who hear the good news that Christ the Lord is risen today. Lift up our hearts that even as we sit apart, we are held together by this good news. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Well, I do have my monkey home with me today. Um, some of you have met Poco the monkey. He's been part of our way of coping with this time of separation at church when we do the kids message. He is our stand-in for small children. So I'm gonna bring out Poco the monkey now and Poco has some things that he wants to tell us about Easter. Where are all the people? Well, they're out there. You know, it's saying right along there that some of the folks are watching us. So they're paying attention <laughs> and they can hear you. That's right. And we're ready to hear your Easter story. Okay. So you have some props. Oh, in this basket here. Okay. I'll help you with this. All right. So here's your first prop. Are you sure about this, Poco? Okay. I don't know how this relates to the Jesus story, but I'll, I'll try it. Oh, Poco says that the Easter Bunny was in the tomb, and on the third day he came out and saw his shadow 
and then there were six more weeks of Lent. That's not really how the story goes, Poco. Do, do you have anything else in your basket to share, maybe to tell us the story? Okay, right here, I'll, I'll just take these off. Maybe I'll put them on the dog later. Yeah, he would like that. Okay, so, oh, you have something in your hand here. Oh, it's, can we, can I show the people this? All right, let me hold this up to the camera. It's Easter grass. Uh, but what does this have to do with the Jesus story? Oh, your mom says the Easter grass gets everywhere and is showing up months afterward. And Poco says that's just like God's love. God's love is like Easter grass. I suppose it's like pine needles from the Christmas tree then too. Yes, but not as sharp. Okay, got it. Do you have anything else to share us, with us today? Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, 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 but this is, this is a Reese's peanut butter egg. Once again, what does that have to do with the Jesus story? Poco looks like he's not really sure. Oh, he just brought it for me to be nice because he knows that I like chocolate. Okay, you're a good little monkey. Oh, you've got more, all right. All right, let's look in the basket. It's getting pretty empty in there. Oh, this? Poco, it's a rock. What kind of Easter gift is a rock? Oh, oh you say that's the best kind of Easter gift because on Easter Sunday, the rock was moved. Oh, you are so smart after all. Thank you for that. Oh, you got one more thing in your basket. All right. Oh, this? And it's for me. I got an Easter egg. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I love Easter eggs, and nobody hides Easter eggs for me anymore. Although we hit them for the children this morning, and they found them already, because even big kids like to hunt Easter eggs. Oh, what's inside my egg? I don't hear anything. It must be something fluffy. Easter egg is empty. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> oh, the Easter egg is empty to remind us of the empty tomb, that Jesus wasn't in the tomb anymore <laughs> because Christ is risen, right? Okay, thank you so much, Poco. You're, you're, you're such a good help. I appreciate that. You want to wave goodbye to everyone? All right. Bye, everyone. All right, here you go. Oh my goodness. A rock. Who would have thought? The rock that was rolled away from the tomb. Well, we're going to hear a scripture lesson from Tava. Um, we're going to hear a reading from the New Testament, which is a section of the Bible about Jesus. Jesus had taught for three years died on a Friday and his body had been put in a tomb. The disciples, like everyone else, and maybe like you, thought that dead people stayed dead. But early on that Sunday morning, we meet some of the women who followed Jesus on their way to the tomb to pay their respects. And they discover something unexpected. Hear the scripture. Hi, this is Tava. Here's a scripture from Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 15. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. Look, there was a great earthquake, for an angel from the Lord came down from heaven. Coming to the stone, he rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning, and his clothes as white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook with fear and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he has been raised from the dead, just as he said. Come see the place where they laid him. Now hurry, go tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. I've given the message to you. 
With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and grabbed his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I'm going to Galilee. They will see me there. Now as the women were on their way, some of the guards came to the city and told the chief priests everything that happened. They met with the elders and decided to give a large sum of money to the soldiers. They told them, say that Jesus' disciples came in the night and stole his body where he was sleeping. And if the governor hears about this, we will take care of him. So you will have nothing to worry about. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were told. And this report has spread throughout all of Judea to this very day. I appreciate Tava doing that for us, even though we couldn't listen to it in the cars this morning. Um, so to share an Easter message, that first Easter began with great fear and great sorrow. I imagine the disciples were talking amongst themselves, wondering, would they be next? Um, would this begin a new crackdown on the Jews? Would, would the Roman soldiers be looking for them next? Would Pilate be searching for them next? How many would die? How long until it blew over? What would they do now that Jesus was gone? Would Rome be satisfied with the death of one man? So the disciples and the followers have Jesus had prepared for victory. They prepared for power. They prepared for freedom and dominion. They had received death. Um, and because of the Sabbath, they had to hasten the um, embalming process. And they wrapped Jesus' body quickly on Friday and put it in the tomb before nightfall. And then on Saturday was the Sabbath and they couldn't do anything for the body. It's just like one sad thing on top of another. What next? What would they do now? The answer was obvious for some of the women who followed Jesus. They were going to make sure that his body was properly treated for burial and made ready for that. They were going to give him a good send off, one last act of love. I've occasionally seen this um, at funerals where folks go like way over the top with the funeral celebration because they want to do one last act of love and compassion. The women needed to do something. I don't know how many of you have had that feeling of needing to do something. And I think about during this virus time, how many of you have found um, joy in being able to call other people and check on them. Some of you are making masks for local care centers and for the, the hospital, just to be able to do something. The women wanted to do something as well. And it seems like fear kept the men indoors on that first Easter Sunday, but love sent the women out. It makes sense because Roman soldiers were more likely to arrest the men, um, more likely to overlook the women. Um, the women were powerless, they were invisible, the men were considered more of a threat. And the men, maybe they stayed inside that Easter morning because of the weight of shame that they were bearing. Um, the weight of shame they were carrying, having denied Jesus, having fled for part of the time when Jesus was on the cross. And the weight of shame of, of knowing Judas and have never seen this day coming. I mean, have you ever had a good friend turn out to be someone who was doing evil? And there's a shame in that, like, wow, why didn't I see that? So the Easter story begins with fear and failure and uncertainty. In so many ways, that's a familiar story. Are you carrying fear today? Are you feeling a bit like a failure today? Are you uncertain today? We've all been in fear, whether it's fear of little things like the dark and height. We've all had uh, big fears like fear of loss, fear of disability, fear of, of illness and death and suffering, fear of hardship, of struggles. Sooner or later, we wake up to a new day and we don't have joy at that new day saying, hey, I got a new day. Rather, we have fear wondering, 
What next? What will today bring? What now? Fear is practical. It keeps us safe, but it also paralyzes us. And the women, they left the home and they left the men and they carried they carried spices with them to embalm a body. They were going to take care of a dead body. They set out from there in the scripture. One of the accounts says there was an earthquake along the way. And frankly, to be honest, I'm wondering why the women just didn't turn around and say that must have been a sign. We should go back home. Earthquakes and all that. It's like um, driving to a doctor's appointment in a hailstorm or uh, like getting a, a blizzard on the day of a funeral. One more reason to be afraid. One more reason to head back home and try to hang hunker down and be safe. But the women were single-minded, heading for the tomb to the extent that they didn't even think about that stone. And, and they wondered as they were going, they're like, um, who's going to move that big stone away from the tomb so we can take care of the body? Um, they, they hadn't thought things through. They, they were so focused. Then they worried about the Roman soldiers. And what about them? What about the Roman soldiers? Weren't the women afraid? of the guards who wielded the whips, who hammered the nails, who pierced his side. Weren't they afraid? They show up at the tomb and then there's one more thing to be afraid of. There's an angel and like I pointed out again and again, angels in the Bible are not sweet comforting entities that come along and give us peace and encouragement. Angels were terrifying. So in the Bible, when angels showed up, the first words out of their mouth were usually, don't be afraid. It's good news rather than Here's my sword, you're in big trouble. Um, and there were angels at the tomb saying, don't be afraid. And I wonder if the women hearing the angels saying, don't be afraid, could come up with all the list of things they were afraid of that day, afraid of Rome, afraid of the Jewish authorities, afraid of earthquakes, afraid of the stone, afraid of death, afraid of having to deal with a dead body, afraid of uh, losing more of their loved ones, afraid of what's next. How is your list of Easter fears this morning. And the angel says, do not be afraid. Oh, that's really nice for you, angel saying, do not be afraid. Show me where that little switch is and I would gladly switch off fear just for a little bit. Bright, shiny angel, you haven't seen the savior put to death. You haven't seen a good man die because powerful men were threatened by his miracles. You weren't there, angel, when we laid him in the tomb and when we buried our hopes and our dreams. But the angel says a few things. He says, I know you were looking for Jesus. The angel knows why they're there. And the angel says, he is not here. He's been raised, just as he said. The angel has good news. Now, sometimes you can't get rid of your fears, but you can put fear in joy's shadow. You can remember the good news that overshadows the hard news. The good news is God knows why you're here. The good news is God knows what you are looking for. And there is still good news that he is risen. He is risen indeed. We're told that the women left the tomb with fear and great joy. I think about that and I think about, well, shouldn't joy get rid of the fear? But that's not really how it works. They left with fear and great joy. Fear and joy are often like peas and carrots, they're right there, peanut butter and jelly. And, and the women leave the tomb with fear and joy, hurrying to show and share the good news. They had not yet seen Jesus, but the angel's message causes them to hurry. It gives them hope. It gives them joy. Wait here for just a moment. They hadn't seen Jesus, but they had heard the good news. They hadn't seen the risen savior, but they'd heard the story. They're a lot like you and I are um, in that way that they had heard the good news secondhand. Maybe you heard it from a Sunday school teacher. Maybe you heard it at church. Maybe you heard it from a parent. Maybe you heard it from a sibling. Maybe you heard it at camp, but somebody told you the good news 
and you had joy in the midst of your fear, even though you had not seen Jesus yet face to face. Even though we are living in a time with much fear, we dare to lift up joy as a light, as a candle that overshadows the darkness, and to lift up that joy and put our fears in the shadow of the risen Christ who has promised us because I live, you too shall live. The women went with fear and joy. They didn't get far before Jesus met them. And I think this is so great because sometimes we feel like Jesus is just not there, not showing up. But if we go a little bit further, if we look a little bit further, then sooner or later we find out Jesus is right there. Sooner or later he shows up. Maybe he shows up in a word of encouragement from a friend and a card and a mail and a phone call in a word of hope, but sooner or later we see Jesus and we get to hear his voice and the women saw him and they worshiped. There will be a day when we get to the end of this crisis or at least a slowing down of the crisis where we can worship together and say and talk about the times we met Jesus along the road. Times when Jesus has shown up even here, even now, even in the midst of our uncertainty, that Jesus is waiting and walking with us and we will see him. Jesus is alive. And then Jesus sends them out with these words, go and tell my brothers to go ahead to Galilee and there they're going to see me too. Go and tell. Some of you maybe have had that Jesus experience already. You've met Jesus in a powerful way, maybe even recently. Who have you told? Who have you shared the good news with? Who have you been a living witness to that Christ is risen? He is risen indeed. Amen. I would invite you to join with me in prayer. And as we pray, I'll offer an opportunity for you to speak some words out loud from where you're watching. Risen Savior, first of all, we ask that the blessings of Easter hope to rest on those we name who are in our homes right now. For me, I name before you my husband and my kids and my dog. Tender God, we name our school teachers and staff. I think of the Cunninghams, I think of uh, Mrs. Bauer. We speak the names of our loved ones in care centers and in assisted living. We pray for all those who are working in healthcare. Think right off the bat of Natalie and Amy and Kathy. We speak the names of family members we are missing. We miss our mothers. I miss my brothers. We speak the names of our friends as well, and we ask God that you'd hear their names and bless them. Now we lift up before you the names of those we know who have lost jobs or who have had their hours cut.
We also pray for a resurrection miracle to rest upon the researchers, to rest upon all those who are working for a treatment and a cure. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I teased my kids this morning over breakfast and said, well, maybe maybe mom should do a solo for a online church this morning. And, and we burst into song over breakfast. And then my daughter said, no, mom, just no. <laughs> so I won't sing a solo. Um, but I hope that you find a reason to sing this morning. Hear this blessing until we are gathered together again. And now may the God of peace who brought back again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ all that is pleasing to him. To him be the glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Blessings, my friend. Good luck with this blizzard. Keep in touch, all right? You're not alone. Reach out if you need help or need a listening ear or need the sounds of prayer. We are here for you. You are beloved. <laughs>